Welcome to Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater. Issues and Answers is presented as a public service to New Mexicans by State Employees Credit Union, who have been proudly serving the families of New Mexico locally and abroad since 1958. State Employees Credit Union is ready to help you and your family with all your financial goals. And now, Issues and Answers with Diane Kinderwater. Welcome to the program. I'm Diane Kinderwater, an issue that is dividing our country, dividing our state, dividing our community would be policing. Some people are supporting of the police. Other people are thinking there's too much uh, police brutality. Well, on the program today, we're going to talk about policing and crime. It's something that we're reading in the front headlines of the newspaper every day. We're he hearing it on the radio. We're hearing it on issues and answers on your other TV programs that you watch on Coffee and Conversation. Policing and crime in Albuquerque in New Mexico is front and foremost in all of our minds because it affects our neighborhoods. Well, on the show we're going to give you some input how your voice can be heard about what you think about crime in our neighborhoods and what you think about police and how they handle that crime. So st uh, please stay with us as we discuss the very important issue of community policing councils here in Albuquerque. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the program. If crime in your neighborhood is a concern to you and you don't know who to tell except for your other neighbors, there is a place where you can voice your concerns and that would be your area community policing council. We have six of them to go along with our six uh, police area commands. Today in the show we're going to talk to two members of the Southeast Area Community Policing Council who will discuss what they talk about in their meetings. It's just not crime in their neighborhoods, but again, how police are reacting to that crime. So a lot to talk about on the show today. I have Kathleen Burke. She is the member of the Southeast Area Community Policing Council. Thank you, Kathleen, for being a part of the show. And Mike Krukowski. Thank you so much, Mike. He is another member of the Area Command Pos uh, Policing Council. And you, Mike, gave me the word polarizing. Polarizing is what is affecting us not only the crime but the reaction to the crime what and did you mean by that mike opinions about so when i introduce myself i try not to be too wordy but i say i'm neither pro-police nor anti-police and i don't try to hear both sides of the issue i am here in the council to hear all perspectives about policing and about crime and I say that my job is to help foster, help, not tell people, but to help foster safer and more prosperous communities for everyone. And that includes our families, friends, co-workers, our uh, police officers, our city workers, and the homeless and less disadvantaged. All of them want a safer and more prosperous community for all of them and that's what I try to to uh, promote and so I don't try to hear all cops are mm, or the other side a angels or or whatever so I want to hear all the perspectives because we have a very diverse community here in New Mexico and especially Albuquerque Kathleen, thank you for being part. Kathleen Burke, you shared with me before the right before the camera started rolling. This is, in your opinion, a place where people can voice their concerns about possibly uh, police brutality in the southeast area. It could be. Um, we our meetings are open uh, to the public. Um, currently, we're on Zoom, but the Zoom meetings are open to the public. We take questions and comments uh, from the attendees. And interestingly, we've had an, an uptick in the number of people participating since we've moved to the Zoom platform. We have more people coming on Zoom than we're attending to our live meetings. So that, it's kind of exciting, actually. And I think that has to do also with the national scene. Yeah, and when you said the uptick, right I wasn't thinking of Zoom. I was thinking nationally. about nationally what's right, going on. Our right. cities are exploding with right. protests. Which is so. really hard on us, right? It's, it's difficult for us to be at home, hearing this news, watching it on TV. Um, it's, it's very distressing for all of us. But the flip side is problems are being addressed and problems are being solved. And that includes here in Albuquerque and that includes in the Southeast Area Command. Tell me where the Southeast Area Command is. 
Well, basically, uh, the boundaries south of I forty, uh, north of Kirtland, uh, east of I twenty five, extending down to uh, Isleta, I believe. Okay, but around the and fair, up to the foothills. The fair, oh, okay, the fair state fair area, from the foothills down yeah. to Isleta. That's a large area. It's you both broad. live there. Mm -hmm. um, you attend the meetings. When are the meetings, Kathleen? Uh, third Thursdays of the month and we meet at six o'clock on zoom and the the zoom meeting link can be found on the uh, Community Policing Council website which is part of the CABQ website did this is more than an area for a gripe session we hear plenty of gripes. <laughs> I bet you do. I'm no sure doubt. you do. Because <laughs> there's a lot, sadly, there's a lot to gripe about. There is a lot to gripe about regarding it's crime true. and how well, it's handled. Uh, yeah. So but I imagine that was my terse word, crude word gripe, because I can just sit there. Oh, they're complaining. But Well, we, tr we try to promote uh, thoughtful, cordial discussions, uh, open-minded, uh, fair, to hear all perspectives and then try to be productive about it. That's, that's one of the things that we have highlighted in so many of our meetings, both the public meetings and our uh, internal meetings and our meetings with the DOJ and APD, is that we're trying to be problem solvers, not problem creators. Uh, and so... How were you formed? Are you part of the police? I mean, will the Albuquerque Police Department the commands listen to you? Are you an auxiliary? Are you part of them? Well, I would like Kathleen, Kathleen to answer that because I think that they, she, she has a good example with her recommendation. Meaning we hear okay. of a lot of different sure. community groups getting together, taking their time, but then are you being listened to? Well, interestingly, yes, we are. And I'll tell you the... <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you how and why briefly, um, and how you were formed. Yes, sure. So we were formed as by the the CASA, part of the the DOJ, the United States Department of Justice monitor overseeing police in Albuquerque, going back six years. Court appointed settlement agreement. Right. Right. Set up that we needed to have community policing yes. councils where the public is involved. Okay. Right, that we needed oversight. Um, APD had made a number of mistakes, particularly around use of force, uh, where p members of the police force had either hurt or killed or just used too much force with citizens. Uh, a number of citizens rose up. They asked the United States Department of Justice to get yeah. involved. The DOJ said, yes, we will get involved. and that's how we got this. And so now it's up to us to help get that done in Albuquerque. Let's get this, this CASA, uh, let's get this completed, let's do what they're asking us to do, let's, let's join together and improve APD together and, and get us where we need to be. And, and I, for one, truly believe that's happening. And I think we can objectively say that it is happening. As a matter of fact, when uh, over the past few months, when so much violence erupted around this country. And in Albuquerque as well with our protests downtown Albuquerque. Right. However, however, we, um, I know as a member of the policing council for three years now, I was able to take some sense of pride in saying we have made great progress in, in our city and our policing and we have risen above um, what's going on in some other communities as a result of their police force not having had this sort of reform. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Mike, we, you're looking at her? Uh, I, I have to echo that. Uh, I really do see a lot of good things, um, a lot of progress, and uh, increasing accountability transparency uh, from APD and uh, in just yesterday um, let me describe two weeks one week four meetings in five days the longest two and a half hours the week before that five meetings in six days mm -hmm. three and a half hours uh, meeting a who's meeting who is meeting we Mike? meet with uh, the Department of Justice with the 
uh, APD. Uh, we've had presentations by the new uh, Albuquerque Community Safety Department that's being stood up. Uh, all of these things are uh, very difficult to, to try to get our act together, if you will. And uh, a lot of the, uh, the commanders and the uh, lieutenants are just really pleased with the things that we help them work through and how to present information and to hear what uh, the community is saying. So um, I'm, I'm real pleased with what's going on, but there's a whole lot of work to do. So you were set up to be a part to oversee the police. These actually, community policing councils actually oversee, but what kind of clout do you have to have them accept your recommendations? Well, I wouldn't say that we oversee them. I like what uh, Steve uh, Schmidt said in the Southwest CPC. He said, we are a bridge, a uh -huh. bridge between the police department and all of the various parts of our community. So we uh, try to get the conversations going so that we can find solutions. We don't oversee them. We do review and assess. Uh, there, we have five responsibilities. I hope that okay. I don't forget them. You got One of them is to uh, review priorities that the police department has, uh, recruiting efforts. This is not in order. Um, we make recommendations, taking recommendations from the community to the police department. Um, there's another one, and overseeing uh, policy and procedures and training. So we don't oversee it, um, review and assess it, okay. and then make our recommendations. But we do not have the the you know clout to say do this. We can make the recommendations, and we have our chance, what is it, every six months to uh, present our view of how things are going in front of the, uh, the federal judge that is overseeing. We are, we are considered friends of the court, and we have the uh, ability to testify in federal court about progress that's being made. Kathleen mentioned she's been on the um, police council for three years. How long have you been on, Mike? I've been on for three and a half. Okay. And I've been engaged with this for more, uh, about five, five years, and I volunteered to be on the original police oversight board. Thank goodness I was not selected. <laughs> so before we get into how the public can participate in addition to your Zoom meetings, in a nutshell, from both of you, over the past three and a half years, you said, Kathleen, some positive things. You have actually seen effectiveness from this community policing council to APD. I believe so. How do you see it? How have you seen it? What changes have you seen well, based on some of the recommendations? And, and Kathleen, if you can give us some examples of actually sure. things that you presented the judge saying, you know what, APD is doing this, judge, or uh, our community recommended, but they're not. I'm going to give you a minute to think of some, Mike, as well. But Kathleen, what successes have you had and what things still need to be worked on? So, um, <clears throat> as Mike said, we don't have the we don't have final say in anything, but we do ha the the chief and APD do have to listen to us. So, you know, in the end, they might go they might oppose us, but they don't have a choice. They they must listen to us. And by the way, there are usually three or four members of the force at our CPC meetings, and so this is one way that the community has direct contact with the force at the meetings and the the commander is uh, it's incumbent upon him to show up at the CPC with the current crime statistics for his or her command and so we get a monthly update on what's going on has 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 robbery increased has uh, criminal sexual penetration decreased has theft you know we we get the numbers every month and I want to hear about your what's going on in the southeast area but sure. before we do 
it's good we know they give you the statistics but right, before we right. do the impact over three years what have you seen change as a result of recommendations I mean you're listened to which is great but when you testify before the judge what are you able to share with the judge so I personally have not spoken with the judge I, I've, I've written uh, some emails to the judge we do correspond a little bit um, the changes that I have wanted that I've proposed have been fulfilled through our recommendation process at, at the CPC itself. We have a recommendation process whereby we submit a formal recommendation. It gets passed at the Community Policing Council. Uh, if it gets passed, then it, then it goes up to the chief and the chief and his team decide what they're going to do with this recommendation. And so, um, for example, we, um, uh, I was looking at how um, prostitution is reported in the Southeast Area Command because we do have a situation in the Southeast where there is a lot of sex trafficking happening, there's a lot of prostitution happening, and, and I bring these up with no judgment, right? These are just objective facts that this goes on, uh, a lot of it in the international district where, where there's human trafficking and sex, traffic, sex trafficking happening. And so part of my reasoning for getting on the council in the first place was to draw attention to this problem this is happening in my backyard, what can be done, how can we fix this, how can we as a community with the police force address these problems. And not living in the Southeast Area Command, the only time I do hear that, oh, there is prostitution going on there, I didn't know uh -huh. about the sex tra trafficking, is state fair time, right? I mean, that's when we hear the news. Other right, than that, right. we hear nothing about it. Right, no, it's 24-7. <clears throat> okay, okay. And, and so... So you wanted to make sure your recommendation was actually to count. Well, my, yes, my recommendation was to make sure that, that the crimes that have to do with prostitution and sex trafficking were being reported properly. So we had a case, for instance, um, where anything having to do with, with the sale of sex was being uh, categorized as prostitution, which is incorrect because there are, there are felonies, huge felonies having to do with sex trafficking, right? And then there's prostitution, a misdemeanor, and then there is solicitation, which is the buyer of yeah. the sex. Lots of different crimes, and to say that they are all prostitution uh, is incorrect. Especially when the, the child trafficking Absolutely. Is, is felony. Absolutely. It's another situation. It was always counted as prostitution. They, right. Internally. Internally. And okay. so, And so this is an example where we can bring this to the public's eyes and also bring it to the chief's attention and say, look, chief, this is happening and this needs to be fixed because why? Because the, this data, these figures go all the way up to the feds, they go to the DOJ, they're used for all kinds of purposes. We have to know what crime and looks funding, like. Funding. And funding. Oh, funding. Funding. We, we have to know what the crime that's happening looks like. How, do, how is it classified? What is it actually? So this is a, we hope will be a success story. The, the, it was an, an analyst has looked at the recommendation. They have sent back uh, their, what they intend to do to fix this problem. Um, it's not a simple fix, right? Because it's all on computer. It's all, it all follows Nothing a computer simple. program where things are defined in a but certain Thank you way. for that example, Kathleen. Most thank welcome. you. Mike? The term that came to mind during that uh, uh, discussion is, we want data-driven decisions and those decisions for solu you know, proposed solutions to be effective and cost-efficient. So data is, uh, underlies all of that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to answer your question directly because I don't look so much at how things are improving. I know that there are good things going on, but part of the responsibility that we have is to go on what's called a ride-along. And you actually sign your life away with the waiver to go on it and say, if I get killed, tough luck. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so we go on patrol with the officers, and I've been on four, uh, two in the valley, one in the southeast, and one in the northeast, and then pandemic hit. But I'll tell you that the sorts of things that people think they want from the police 
are actually happening on the street. I see them doing all that outreach, talking to people who are having problems with domestic violence and saying, okay, you can get resources here, you can, uh, uh, you can try this approach. That they cover, and people who are being evicted from their apartments, that's going to be a big thing these days in the coming months. Uh, they deal with so many human um, relation problems. Uh, and again, it's all about safety and prosperity. I see them doing marvelous things. And so I can't say I'm seeing an improvement. Maybe that improvement happened before I came on, or maybe it, it's always been there. But I think part of the story that we as CPC members have to uh, share is what we see on the street. And we do that when we report on our ride-alongs. And so you've seen... Dealing with mentally ill and You've seen and police officers, people. not necessarily emergent, what we think of emergent police officer issues, but dealing with the human, um, human social service type right. aspect. Right. And I think... And they have the information to share, get help here, get help here. Not necessarily, right. not necessarily a 911 call, but right. they're reaching out for help from somebody. And they, they, they did a really good job on all of the uh, instances that I went on. And, and they're not just about arresting people. Creative problem solving. The very first ride along I went on, a domestic abuse, a father drunk beating his son. And the officers were interviewing them as separately as they should. And finally, the officer, responding officer that I was riding with said, how about if I do this? I, t I can't figure out who I should arrest. I mean, he was sort of yeah. blunt about that. He says, <laughs> how about this? How about if I uh, take your dad down to uh, the VA and he talked to the son and said, do you have some place that you could go to tonight? You know, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> and so it to was a creative problem solving and it was yeah. not about arresting, putting law in enforcement, mm -hmm. putting people in jail, punishing them. Mike, I'll see if Kathleen has gone on any ride-alongs, but have you testified or given information to the DOJ regarding what you saw in these, in your community policing meetings? Any recommendations that you were a part of any testimony? Uh, I made? made two recommendations and they're sort of in limbo right now. Uh, one of them has to do with a really cool uh, mobile phone app that most people don't know about and I hear that they don't want to support it anymore. It's called the Albuquerque Police Mobile App, both Android and, and uh, Apple phones. And one of the biggest complaints that I hear is I called 911 or I called 242 cops or whatever and I was on hold for 20 minutes and then they hung up on me. I use that app for reporting shootings, um, assaults, uh, there was one that I... You use the app instead of calling 911? Yes, and I get answers on those typically anywhere from two minutes to about six minutes and I get a record of it. So I can so, I could but show you on a, my but phone. But you're calling APD. It's I'm, contacting it's, with APD. It's contact with the uh, the dispatchers, oh. and it's just one of three ways that oh. you can report crimes and ask for assistance. More than 911. Well, I know there's 911. There's the non-emergency number two to call. Two for two cops. Two for two cops. That's the non-emergency. Right. And the other is this. What is the name of the app? It's called Albuquerque Police mobile or ABQ police mobile and you can find it again on the on the city website it's been there for a couple of years thank you um, and your other we were running out of time with your other and you can do it online no your other recommendation that you made uh, I don't remember <laughs> I don't remember either I can't remember often. so Kathleen have yes. you gone on a ride along I have I've done two mm -hmm. one just last week and what did you learn that you can share I learned that um, <clears throat> policing does require a lot of money. Um, it's no surprise how much of the city budget goes to policing. For example, my fir the first call that I went out with in our, on my ride along was to a dead body. And that processing, um, a dead body takes hours of time and 
a number of officers to be present and calling in the mm -hmm. office of the medical examiner and it's kind so like it is on TV and Precise. the police it is, and there's a lot of people and the and the police chaplain for example and yeah, yeah. so um, nothing is simple when it comes to policing really I would say now I take that back something that is simple that is which is another place where I'm seeing success is that I'm seeing the, the policing culture change at APD. It used to be that, that police in the city could do essentially whatever they wanted without impunity. That's what's changing. That's when I talk about seeing progress, mm -hmm. a lot of it is, um, has to do with attitudes, has to do with how they are policing each other, how they are policing each other's attitudes. And um, it is no longer a situation where they act uh, without impunity as they wish. Um, and, and I'm not naive about this, I don't think. And, and there are many, plenty of activists in this community who would be mad at me, I think, for saying that, that there is progress and, and, that, and that what's going on behind the scenes is actually sets Albuquerque a little bit ahead of, of many other cities. But it's true. This, this process is working. And, and I would echo that. That was one thing that I would say as I've seen this evolution of the um, embrace of, of reform. That's the wonderful. culture. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kathleen Burke, Mike Kruchowski, for being a part of the Southeast uh, Police Community, Police and Councils, and all that you're doing in the community. We'll have to have you back to Love hear to. about what's going on in crime specifically in your area or not going on, we hope. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks again for your public service, Mike and Kathleen. Thanks for watching this show. I'm Diane Kinderwater. We're going to bring you more positive news. That's good news to hear things. The culture is changing. Make it a great week with your family. We'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye.